Okay, so we're almost there. We need our true purple. So I had my bluish purple and then I just need to add some more red to it so that I get the true purple that's kind of in between the red and the blue. So I'm squeezing out a little bit more red. I think it needs to be a little redder. Not much. Maybe a little bit more. There. I think that's going to be just about right. Yeah, I like that. All right. And then that goes in this little area. Let's get some water on the tip of this area. There. And then I'll start up here. Yeah, I feel I'm feeling like it needs just a hint more red possibly. So let's just get that in here. There. I think that's better. Get that in. Very rich dark color. And be careful here along the reddish purple. There we are. And then on this side. And yeah, I think we are just perfect. And then we're getting into where we're hitting the water. Need to take some of that pigment off. So we get a nice transition. Now you'll notice that whenever you have the uh, French ultramarine in a mixture, it tends to separate a little bit, and that is because the French ultramarine blue is a uh, granulating color, which means that that's part of its properties. Because I think I mentioned earlier that you know the pigment particles in French ultramarine blue are bigger than in most of the other pigments. That's why it's granulating. It's kind of like sand in a river. Um, there we have it. See, nice and dark. Let's rinse that out. And before I let it dry completely, you can see I had it all the whites showing through a little bit here. Again, this doesn't matter. It just matters to me because I like it to look nice and clean and crisp as much as I can. There. All right, so that was the true purple. Now, we're going to, since we have the true purple here, we might as well put the true purple on. See, I, I put two um, pieces of tape. And I'm just going to make a purple stripe while I have that true purple on my brush. There's that. And I'm going to rinse that out. And you'll see why I'm doing that a little bit later. And let's see, I have a true orange. Remember, we already did the true orange. And before I make that into a yellow orange, I am going to take the orange and put that probably down here. Get a stripe in of that. Yes, orange. Because what I like to do is I like to do um, a section with the complementary colors of my color wheel. So we got two of the this called secondary colors when they consist of two primary colors. They're called secondary colors. Purple was red and blue, and the orange is red and yellow. All right. So now we can um, doctor up this true orange and make it a yellow orange by putting in a little bit more yellow. Let's see here. And a little bit more. Get a little bit more yellow. 
to make that happen. Put some more yellow out here. Let's see how that's going to work. There we have it. That's more like a yellow orange. Actually, you feel like maybe even a little bit more yellow. Yeah. And also need to get some water in the tip here before we paint. There we go. And then hopefully I won't get my hands in that purple. There. I need a little bit more yellow in it to make it really, truly a yellow orange here. Okay, so we got a yellow orange here. Better get it painted before it dries on me. Up here, down here. Where it starts hitting, you can see it's hitting the the water now. Take some of the pigment out and drag it down into this watery area. More pigment out, and here we go. All right. There's that, yellow-orange. Okay, so the last color we're missing is the true green. So we have our blue-green here, and we have more blue there. So I need to grab some of this yellow and put it over in the blue-green. That's a nice, get a little bit more blue. And maybe a little bit more yellow. I think that is a nice, nice true green we got here. And let's just get a little bit of water in the tip. And we'll have our color wheel completed, except for our little secondary area where we're going to put the complementary pairs in. So, let's see. Yeah, that's a nice green. Don't want it too, too watery. Just pull it down here. Could have had it a little. more saturated. That's what I'm doing right here. All right. Just want to try and get it really dark up here so it's not too watery. And then we're moving down. Getting into the area where we have water. Take some of the pigment out, just drag it down. More of it out, and nice light tip. So all I want to do is I want to take all the moisture out of here and then see if I can darken up here a little bit. I feel that it wasn't quite dark enough up here. 
I get that in before it starts drying, I'm good. If it's already starting to dry, then I'm in trouble. I think it's okay. There we go. Hold it a little bit like this. And that's our third and last secondary color. So I'm going to get that on my second and on my complementary pair chart out here that I'm making out here on the edge. There's our green. So there we have our three secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. And let's take this one off. Ooh, see here, that's where it happens. You can see, that's why I like to uh, take that tape off right away. I think I can probably save it, but just want to dab in a little bit more pigment here so I get a nice rich color there. And then let's see what we can do. On this one here, let's grab a tissue and see if we can kind of dab that up. Again, it's not like the end of the world. I just like it to look nice and neat. Uh, that's okay. Uh, so let's just um, talk about complementary colors. So we have purple here. Purple consists of red and blue, uh, the two, prim two of the primary colors. And the third primary color is yellow. So yellow would be the complementary color to purple. So let me put some yellow up here next to the purple. And when you put complementary colors next to each other, they make each other look brighter. There we have it. And when you mix them together, I'm going to show you that in just a bit, they neutralize each other. That's very important to know. That's why you get mud if you mix all three primary colors together. Red, blue and yellow. And if you mix them all three together, you're going to get kind of a muddy color. And sometimes mud is good. And sometimes that's exactly what we don't want. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of the red. The red is a primary color. The green is a primary color. It is a secondary color that consists of the two other primary colors, um, blue and yellow. So we're going to put some red next to the green here. And that's the other complementary pair. So here, nice like that. Which red color? There we have those two together. And then the last primary color that we're missing is the blue. And the blue goes next to the orange because orange consists of red and yellow and blue and orange are complementary colors. So let's get some of our French ultramarine blue and put a nice little stripe of that next to our orange. So that'll go here. Look how nice that is. There we go. Okay. So there we have our three complementary pairs, yellow and purple, blue and orange, red and green. Okay, so we got our complementary pairs there, and now I'm going to show you that when you mix the complementary colors together, you're going to get a neutral a mud, sometimes we call it. If we don't like it, we call it mud. And if we're happy with it, we call it neutrals, I think. All right, so yellow and purple. Let's take yellow over here and mix it in with purple over here. 
and see what we get. You see how you get? It gets muddy and muddy and muddier. So that's a neutral color that we get by mixing those two colors together. So I'm going to take, oh, maybe I want to do, since I'm a little anal, as you know already, I'm going to take a piece of tape and just put it down at least like here, that way, there. And then I'm going to go and can use that as a border. I'm going to shake and make a nice rectangle of that neutral color. It's kind of a brown that I get by mixing those two colors together. Make it a little bit bigger, like here, try to make it semi-straight lines. It's kind of fun to do this. I hope you will enjoy it, and most of all, it teaches you a lot. So there was that pair. Then we have the blue and the orange. So I have blue up here. And I have my orange, my true orange here, so let's mix those two together. So that almost became greenish. Let's see here. I need to put a little red in it to make it a... There was too much yellow in this one. I think it might have been my yellow-orange. So that's why I threw it off a little bit. There we go. All right. So here's that. Blue and orange. Also kind of a brownish color. Neutral color, you see, and last but not least, I need to take my green. I should just for take that dirty part of the red out just to make it true. I'm going to take some of the green I have over here, mix it into the red. And you can see there's another neutral. They're very close to the same, but that makes sense, right? Because all of them are basically red, blue, and yellow mixed together. So here's this one. There we have it. Should probably put a little bit more green in it to make it more muddy. Now there's nothing wrong with these neutral colors. They come in very handy. Sometimes that's exactly what we're after. But we just have to understand how to create them and how to avoid creating them if that's not what we're after. So here we are. I think that's pretty good. There you have your three neutrals mixing together the complementary pairs. And then the last thing I do, other than taking this tape off, of course, is... Ah, that way it looks kind of nice. Um, I have to write on my color wheel what colors it was I used. So I want to uh, write the names of the three primary colors that I used, so that was transparent yellow. It was French ultramarine blue.
and it was quinacridone gold, uh, red. So that way I know what these three primary colors will give me. I can take a look here and I can see if they will give me the colors that I'm looking for. Are they doing bright or enough greens? Are they, you know, oranges, whatever it is, purples, whatever it is I'm after. And you can see here is this color wheel that I did with French ultramarine blue as my blue. And here I did the color wheel with the same red and the same yellow, but I swapped out my blue with the Antwerp blue. And what you'll see is I'm getting brighter greens. I'm not getting any granulation because you don't get granulation from the French ultramarine blue. Uh, but my purples are very muddy. Can you tell how the purples are much muddier with the um, Antwerp blue? Because in Antwerp blue, there's already a little bit of yellow. And that's why it'll make super bright uh, greens, but it'll make dull orange uh, uh, purples. And of course, with the red and the yellow, you don't see any difference because there's nothing new there. However, I do have another one that I can show you. Here is another color wheel I did where I used a transparent yellow, but then I used pyro red from Daniel Smith. And then I used the French ultramarine blue. So the red was the one I exchanged. Instead of um, the uh, quinacridone red, I used pyro red. And you can see that um, the um, purples are also dull and the oranges are bright because there's a little bit of yellow in pile red. So every time you switch something out, um, it'll create a change. And I had another one I kind of wanted to show you. That's this one here, where I used um, cobalt blue um, instead of, let me show you. So I use cobalt blue instead of French ultramarine blue. And remember, we've been talking about how cobalt blue doesn't go real dark. So you can see the, the greens are not so dark and uh, the purples are lovely. Uh, also not so dark. They're quite a bit lighter. Can you see that? Quite a bit lighter, but uh, still quite beautiful and clean and the greens are also nice. They're just, they, you can't get, see how it doesn't go quite as dark. And the, the true green doesn't go quite as dark. So every time you switch out one of the primary colors and do a color wheel, you know, something's gonna shift. So have fun with that and uh, go do yourself a color wheel. Happy painting.